Hi everybody, I'm Katina McHenry, Communications Director here at the Macomb School of Business, and you are joining us on our Big Ideas Show, where we look deeper into faculty research happening here on campus. Joining me today is Trisha Moravec. She is a new professor here in the Macomb School of Business. She is Assistant Professor of Information Management. We are focusing on her new paper today, which everybody will be very interested in. It's focusing on fake news. The title of the paper is Fake News on Social Media. People believe what they want to believe when it makes no sense at all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. I've like ever since you got here, we've been talking about this paper and mm -hmm. fake news. I've been very mm -hmm. interested in this because now it feels like fake news has become a household buzz term. Right. And it's used constantly. But unfortunately it's not being used in the, in right the correct way. way. Yes. So the way that I'm using fake news and the way that fake news should be used is that it's used to describe information that's verifiably false. Yes. And how I also describe it is it's intentionally created to mislead. Huh. So that's my understanding of fake news, but unfortunately, it's currently being used in ways that don't actually describe false information. Right, right. And mm -hmm. I, I think what's most offensive as a journalist is the misuse of the right. term. So let's talk a little bit about just your, your motivation for mm -hmm. wanting to even look into this topic. Right. So it was in 2016. And if you'll remember 2016, that was when our presidential election happened. And so leading up to the 2016 presidential election, two of the three most engaged with pieces of news on social media were false. Hmm. And so Which were realizing those? this, so it was one about Pope endorses Donald Trump uh -huh. and that Hillary sold uh, some guns to ISIS, uh -huh. something like that. Yeah. And so that was the first and then the third most engaged with. So that means shared, liked, whatever, mm -hmm. but people saw it and likely believed it wow. for a bit. Right. And so, you know, and Facebook had this this problem and continues to where they're profit driven. They want us to stay online. Right. And so to do that, they show us information that we like. And that means our confirmation bias is driving right. what we're doing online and everything. And so, so information that we like, whether it's true or not, it doesn't really matter to Facebook. Not. And you guys just focused on Facebook yeah. and the research. We just focused on Facebook and mm -hmm. the research just to kind of constrain it. But really, it was at this time, it was in 2016, when I needed a new research project, and I was very motivated by this relevant issue uh -huh. that was occurring. And so I had this research question of, well, can people detect fake news on social media? And does this disputed flag that Facebook debuted, which was, it said, it had a little caution sign, uh -huh. and it said, disputed by third-party fact-checkers. And so they were going to put this on fake articles after enough people had said this might be fake. And uh -huh. we won't go into the issues with that design yeah, in Yeah, because we'll be here all day talking about right. that. <laughs> I could talk about this for <laughs> hours. But I was curious, like, does this work? And can people detect fake news? And right. so I brought this to, to my advisor, and we just took off and studied it in a lab with students and using electroencephalography or EEG, which is measuring brain activity. Uh -huh. So the flag was on particular articles that could have been real or not, but it was sort of their Facebook's way of disclaiming that it may or may mm -hmm. not be true. And it's really up to you to decide what you believe about that information. So I think <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why it didn't work. Uh -huh. Because what people actually need is a flag that says, this is fake, uh -huh. not something that says this may or may not be fake. Yeah. So the issue with the phrase disputed by third party fact checkers is that it's kind of soft. It's very soft language uh -huh. that doesn't really get to the fact that this is fake news and you shouldn't believe it. But that was the intention, as far as I know, yeah. of the flag was to say this is inaccurate information and mm -hmm. you should not be consuming it as truth. So when you brought the group in to test whether or not your research would or wouldn't work, what happened? So it was one person at a time, and this is one of the constraints of EEG research is because you have to put this headset on people. Right. And so that's one interesting factor in getting enough subjects and uh -huh. actually doing research like this. But what happened is that they came into the lab, they went through some demographic questions, and then I got the headset put on them. And then they went through 50 articles that were either true or false, and they were actual articles that were circulating around December, January um, of 2016, 2017. Uh -huh. 
And so they were actually verifiably true or false. They were real articles. And people only saw the headlines, and then the headlines were either flagged as false or not, which was the control condition. Mm -hmm. And so what we ended up seeing is that when you ask people, you know, how believable is this article? How credible is this headline? Mm -hmm. People's belief didn't change when the flag was present. Really? So their stated belief didn't change whether it was flagged or not. And so that was an initial, you know, wow. So the flag doesn't work. Facebook yeah. had also figured this out. But I think we end up getting more into the why it doesn't work. Right. And so we found out that the flag doesn't work. But then, alarmingly, we also checked whether people were correct. Huh. When and you whether say they correct. believed it or not. Okay. So no matter how outrageous the headline was, mm -hmm. your determination was whether or not people believed what the, the headline the headline mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so the way i measured this was that the items there are three items on a seven point likert scale uh -huh. with the middle being i don't know unsure and so for someone to be classified as correct if it was a false article they needed to say either i it's extremely unbelievable not believable not very believable and if they said any of those then they would be correct. And likewise, for true, if it was true, as long as they said this is extremely believable, moderately believable, slightly believable, uh -huh. even if they said slightly. I mean, that's not a very big commitment. Right, yeah. But in, if, even if they said slightly, then I would count them correct. Yeah. But if someone was unsure or in the opposite direction, they were incorrect. Yeah. And what I ended up finding is that I think 17% of my sample was able to detect fake news better than chance. So that means they were correct on more than 50%. Yeah. Which but is that's a small really, number. really bad. Yeah. It's only 17%. That's the just... best person did 66%. Wow. Correct. And that's a D or an F. That's, that's essentially bad. failing. So that, what does that's that tell bad. you? Does that tell you that people will... I mean, obviously, in the title of your paper, people believe what they want to believe. But was it surprising to you that people believe what they already felt in their moral being? So to capture that, we used a measure of confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. So assessing what people had already, what people believed based on some conservatism items and whether they self-identified as a Democrat or Republican. So combining these two. Huh. Oh, God. <laughs> right. And using that, we're able to see that if the headline was something that aligned with your confirmation bias, then people believed that more. Yeah. So yes, essentially people were unable to detect fake news. The flag did not work as Facebook had intended. And it was essentially just this confirmation bias where people really just believe whatever they want to believe. And that's not entirely new, right. but the extent to which confirmation bias drives what we do on social media and what we believe, that is a new topic yeah. to be studied. So. So on the back end, did you look at um, just Facebook and, and how they um, infiltrate information into their platform and how they sort of um, categorize certain stories to target certain people? Because they have those algorithm, al algorithms to figure out who people are, what their interests are, right. depending on part of the country and all these other variables. Right. And so that creates these echo chambers uh -huh. where you know Facebook is financially motivated to keep us online and keep us happy. Yeah. And so they already know that they want to show us information that we like so that we stay online because they're doing hundreds of micro experiments mm -hmm. every week. Yeah. And so they know what they're doing. But the problem is that you know with their financial motivation, they don't really care huh. about whether they're showing us true information or false. And, yeah. and I didn't go into the details of Facebook's algorithm because it really is a black box. Yeah. None of us really know about it. And Facebook doesn't want to share those details. Of course. But what is just alarming about this whole thing is that we really don't know what we're going to see next. Mm -hmm. And so we are very susceptible to believing fake information. Mm -hmm. And Facebook did not want to take responsibility for their part in the spread of fake news for pretty much all of 2017. Yeah. So when this started coming out about the top two or two of the three most engaged with articles were fake in the three months 
leading up to the presidential election. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg pretty much would just say, you know, this isn't my problem. Wow. This isn't Facebook's problem. You yeah. know, I shouldn't have to, we shouldn't be censoring information. And so slowly throughout the past three years since then, they've come to take more responsibility for this because of they course. realize that as a platform, they need to be providing people with actually valuable information rather than yeah. false information and misleading us. And especially with the Cambridge Analytica right. scandal, yeah, you know, that, that I think that's also helped in helping Facebook to take responsibility. But truly one of the worst problems about this, and as it's been getting worse and worse, is that there just hasn't been anyone taking responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. and but the information is still, it's, it's still coming and it's, it's still, still out there and people are still engaging with it. And people aren't, like, well, one thing I'll say is that, you know, we could train everyone in the world to use Facebook responsibly. Mm -hmm. And then it could be a, an issue of our own that we're taking responsibility for, but that's impossible. Right. And people use social media in a hedonic mindset. They use it to escape. This isn't utilitarian right this isn't work oriented or goal oriented people are using it as a passive source of entertainment right and one of your um, stats in the paper you say social media has become a common source for news more than 50 percent of american adults read news on social media yeah that's and i think it's amazing. actually gone up since then yeah and yeah. so and that's people who get some amount of information and then yeah. i don't have a statistic for this but when I talk to people, and some people say, oh, I get all of my news on social media. That happens. There are people who use social media as a kind of source to curate information, and rather than going out to actual news sources themselves, right. they're using Facebook. And you know, at the end of all this, and I've got a number of other studies looking at fake news yeah. and how we can really help people become more responsible in their social media use. So since this flag doesn't work, can we design it with stronger language to make it work? Can, how else can we design it? What are our options? And since Facebook seems loath to add these into the platform mm -hmm. and really take more responsibility in this way, what people need to do is kind of take responsibility for themselves. Right. And since we can't force people to use social media with a goal in mind. We can't force them to think critically. And it's also very hard for us to think critically. Mm -hmm. We expend a lot of mental effort when we're trying to think about difficult problems and that tires us out. And then we switch back to our automatic or gut level right. cognition, which drives what we do. Yeah. And so we can't force people to use social media in a different way, but what people can do is go to actual news sites and get their news there. Try to be so more examples, goal oriented. Examples, give examples of actual news sites. Well, mm. look, <clears throat> there are biases yeah. in the news and I don't really cover that. But at least if you're on a news site, you know you're consuming news. Right. And so if you're on CNN or even if you're on Fox News or NBC, whatever you're on, at least you know you're consuming news. Yeah. And so, do you think it's more difficult for people these days? So I have two more questions. One, when you have a president who's saying that these reliable news sources that we've known have been reliable for many, mm -hmm. many years are fake news, and when he is very critical mm -hmm. of certain sites, he, he goes after New York Times, he goes after mm -hmm. all of them who don't have positive things to say about him. Right. How do you think that that makes it more difficult for people to make a cognitive judgment about what they believe is real or not? So people who believe what our president is saying of course that makes it harder for them to trust the new site that he says isn't true. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem because it is good to get news from a variety of different news sources mm -hmm. with a variety of biases. You want to do that so that you have a more neutral opinion because you've been able to take information from all sides. Right. And so when we have this instance where people are encouraged to only get news from a couple news sites and the other reputable sources are being bashed and said that they're not reputable and that right. they're all fake news, right. that's a problem for people who are in the camp of believing the president because yeah. then they might discount these actually reputable news sites right. when it would benefit them to right. get news from a variety of different yeah. news sources. 
So what's next? What is, what is the next step? Because obviously there's, there's so much more to uncover about just the idea of fake news. Right. What, what is next? What's your next piece of research? So currently I am setting up the behavior lab wow. in McCombs with EEG equipment. Yes. So that's going to enable me to do more of these EEG studies to see brain cognition as people are on social media, as yeah. they're looking at different types of news. But additionally, looking at a stronger uh, flag to see how that works and whether increased cognitive dissonance can really help people yeah. to better detect fake news, just different types of flags. I'm fascinated by deep fakes. Yeah. I think that with our current society and our technology and the technology growth is just amazing yeah. how quickly we're learning how to do different things. And so these deep fakes, these videos that people are very well able to make it look like someone's saying something else uh -huh. or putting someone else's face on the person who's actually doing the talking and these things, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be fascinating to study as well because since it's a video, I think we've all learned to trust video more mm -hmm. because yeah. it seems more credible. Right. And so what happens in this era of fake news and deep fakes and how all of this is just going to keep progressing. Yeah. The information credibility issue online is just going to keep getting more interesting as we continue to do more of our lives online. Yeah. And so I see just unlimited potential. It's endless, yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like there's really no end to it. No, as, as technology continues to advance yeah. and, and we spend more time online, there's, there's really no yeah. cap. There's no. really no, and and there's is, no threshold. I mean, this is what I love about studying yeah. information systems and information management. It's just yeah. that as technology continues to advance and improve, my opportunities for research just continue to expand as well. Yeah. And so I think this is fascinating. People are fascinating. We are not the rational actors that is often assumed. Right. We're really quite <laughs> It's irrational. not like in the movies. No. <laughs> and so, you know, I love doing this behavioral yeah. style research where I really understand what's going on right. with us right. in the way that we're yeah. using social media. And, and yeah, so I just plan to continue in that trajectory That's until fantastic. I get tired of it and then I don't think you ever will pivot to there'll be more else. to look at I think so one last question what has been the most um, interesting or surprising discovery as part of your research with this particular paper with this paper yes I think what well, one of the things that was very interesting was that the flag didn't work but cognitively people had more activation in their frontal cortex when they were shown news headlines that aligned with their beliefs but were flagged as false. Huh. And additionally, they spent a lot more time thinking about those. So even though we're bad at detecting fake news and the flag didn't work, but behind that, people thought about it more. So what's really going yeah. on there? Do we just discount it? Are we taking it in right. and then saying, mm, okay, but could this be true or false? Okay, well, it doesn't align with my beliefs, so, so I think it's So never mind. False. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So well, just the people believing what they want to believe when it makes no sense at all. Wow. That's, I think, was the most fascinating part. Yeah. For me. Well, this has been so interesting. I mean, like I said, we could talk about this for a whole day. Right. I could. <laughs> I can talk about this forever. Yes. It's, it's very fascinating. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really Absolutely. appreciate your time and just the you know digging deep into what this is and what it's all about so thank you so much if you want to read trisha's paper it's called fake news on social media people believe what they want to believe when it makes no sense at all thank you for joining us on our big ideas we'll have a link to the full paper right there in the bottom of the video we'll see you next time on our big ideas show